Hi everybody, Steven here. So this is part two of my uh, VMware Cloud Foundation. Uh, I'm gonna talk about Cloud Builder. More specifically, we're gonna look at how to deploy it, okay? So stick around and we'll see you in a bit. everybody thanks for sticking around so what we're going to do in this one is we're going to take a look at uh, the vmware cloud builder more specifically we're going to look at how to deploy it i'm going to be using vmware workstation this should be a short video it's not that difficult to be honest with you but anyways part of our series um, now i always like to say this at this point uh, for those of you that have subscribed to the channel thank you very much for supporting it and same thing for those of you that have done the super thanks again two thumbs up to you all right uh, if this is content that you like, please support the channel by subscribing to it. It's totally free. Just click that subscribe button. Also, like the video if you find it entertaining at all. Anyways, enough of that. Let's jump into it. Okay, so uh, let me just jump over to my iPad real fast here. So Cloud Builder is basically an appliance that you deploy here, okay? And Cloud Builder allows us to do the bring up process to deploy our management workload domain and that management workload domain contains your vCenter server your NSX management cluster and the SDDC manager okay uh, so right now we're just focusing on this this will actually have a connection to my management network that my ESXi hosts that I will deploy later uh, that will have a connection to it so uh, I need to make sure that I have uh, an IP address for this, a static IP address. I also need to make sure I got forward and reverse lookups. I also need to set up NTP. And uh, one of the things I notice, again, so the validation process doesn't complain, is if you're, if you're using a certain NTP server on your host, it should be the same NTP server on the appliance, okay? Um, I've actually done it with two different ones. It worked, but it complained, all right? So let's go ahead and do this. Um, so let me get this screen up here. And uh, all right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm using VMware Workstation and I'm gonna deploy the Cloud Builder appliance from there. Now in a production environment, um, you gotta make sure that this machine, you're, if you're gonna use VMware Workstation, it's got a lot of juice behind it. Ideally, if you can deploy the appliance, if you already have a vSphere host set up, an ESXi host set up, even if it's a standalone, um, it's, it would probably be beneficial just to deploy it on that because your server will have a lot more horsepower to handle this. Remember, this little virtual machine has got a lot of software and we're dumping it across the wire to build our environment, okay? So uh, I'm using VMware Workstation. It's going to work for me. In your production environment, you may want to consider uh, what would be appropriate for you. So let's go ahead and deploy this. I'm going to go to file, I'm going to go open, I'm going to fly by Cloud Builder Appliance, and I'm going to open that. Again, you would read through the license agreement, okay, carefully, all that wonderful stuff. I'm going to accept it, I'm going to go next. Now, you just give this, this is just your virtual machine's name, I'm going to call it site A dash Cloud Builder, whatever, okay. That's just the name of the VM that's going to be running under VMware Workstation. I'll go next. And this is where you fill in all the information. So I'm going to put in the min passwords. If you're not sure what the values are supposed to be, you can just hover over these little uh, little small eyes for information. And you can see that it requires eight characters and stuff like that. And you know, you'll know you see that coming in a little bit later on. So I'll type in my admin password. Uh, oops. One bang. And root password, I'm going to type that in. Again, you're given these names. Uh, what's the host name of this? Again, if you just click over here or you just hover over and just the host name of the appliance, it's site A dash cloud builder. Uh, site A dash cloud builder, okay. Now this IP address. The IP address, um, let me go back to my iPad. The IP address, again, should be an IP address that's on the management network. You don't really want to go through a router for this. Ideally, you want to be able to plug right into the management network, because remember, you're dumping a lot of software across the wire here, right? So you want to make sure, you know, ideally that's on the same subnet as your, as the host that you're going to deploy the management um, uh, workload domain to. Uh, so let's go back to my 
screen over here and my IP address for this guy 22.20.10.161 that's mine and you got to make sure you got DNS forward and reverse lookup set up for this appliance again or else it's going to complain the gateway it needs 172.20.10.10 uh, and it's going to test all this stuff during the validation. DNS servers, 172.20.10.10. I only got the one. Uh, the domain name, uh, again, you can have over here if you're, you're not sure. Enter the domain name for this appliance. And again, I just give you an example. Example like con So mine's just vclass.local. Yours might be abc.com or whatever. The domain search paths, again, I'm just going to put in vclass.local. I got to put comma separated if I want to have other search paths as well. But that's all I need. And now my NTP servers, ideally when it comes to the NTP servers, it, you should use an IP address. I would imagine in a production environment, you're going to have dedicated NTP servers, so the IPs aren't going to change. Um, I'm going to actually use a DNS name for some Canadian DNS servers that are out there, one.ca.pool.ntp.org, comma, two dot ca.pool.ntp.org again these are some dns servers that are canadian and i'm just using them uh that type of thing um and that's basically about it i'm just gonna hit that big import button and this is just gonna do its thing for a while so uh we'll come back after it's um after it's finished right it'll probably take about you know 10 15 minutes and i will more than likely speed this up at this point by the way if you haven't already subscribe to the channel hey, please hit that subscribe button you know it supports the channel this is how youtube algorithm works um, um for these videos and if you like it so far hey hit that thumbs up anyways we'll see you back in a bit i'll leave this going
Okay, we can see that it's deployed. If I just hit enter, I can log in. Was I typing the right password? Right, so uh, I'm, I'm actually logged in now. So let's just open up a browser to it. Let's uh, go to my uh, browser and go to site A cloud builder v class dot local gives me because it's got a self signed certificate saying hey you sure you want to go there I'm going to accept the risk and I'm going to continue and that's going to ask me to log in my admin password uh, user ID and my two three bang and then my password now it's asking me um, uh, what platform am I going to be using I'm not going to continue at, after this point here uh, but basically, am I doing Val Cloud Foundation or am I doing it specifically on VxRail? Um, so I'll be picking Cloud Foundation. I can't go past this point anymore um, because I need to create that. Uh, I need to create that Excel spreadsheet so I can import it, right? So let's just go back to here. So I've deployed my appliance. I've deployed my appliance. I got to set up my servers. Let's just assume I've already done that. I now need to do this Excel spreadsheet, okay? Uh, my deployment parameter spreadsheet uh, and that's the next video okay folks so thanks for watching again if you enjoyed this put a couple thumbs up up there i'd appreciate it also support the channel just by simply clicking on that support link it's free uh, stay tuned for the next one that will be creating this spreadsheet okay we're getting close to building our first workload domain bye now